So obviously if you click on the title, like you know what this video is about. I'm already out publicly, so this shouldn't feel as weird as it does, but it still feels weird because coming out is weird. And it, if you're watching this and you're not out, you don't need to come out if you're not comfortable. You shouldn't feel like you have to be forced to come out just because it's more acceptable now than it used to be. That doesn't mean that it's safe and that you need to do it. It took a really long time for me to be comfortable enough in my sexuality to come out and be able to deal with whatever people said. Like I, in my mind, before I came out, I was like, I have to be okay if there's negative responses. So I felt like I needed to work on my mental health and my acceptance of myself before I could publicly come out because I didn't want to come out and have there be negative reactions and not be able to handle it and react badly. I'm really lucky and really blessed that I had a very positive reaction to most of my coming out experiences. I know it's not the same for everyone. I have a lot of friends who had negative reactions or like everyone's heard the horror stories and I'm just extremely lucky that I don't have one. Here's my so my very long-winded acceptance of the fact that I am gay and then my various <laughs> stages of coming out because there were a lot. I have always loved women <laughs> like ever since I was little. My favorite artists like my favorite music artists and everything when I was little was just all girls. I was in love with Hilary Duff when I was like eight like it was an idol worship I was just in love with her. <laughs> um, but the first time that I ever questioned whether or not I was not straight was when I was in eighth grade. I had this best friend who came out to me and we were really really close friends. Talked constantly, texted constantly, hung out every day at school like every weekend it was a lot and in retrospect I had feelings for her and I wasn't ready to accept it yet and it was not great I didn't react well that was a kind of a bad situation because our friendship like wasn't really healthy like she came out to me and then she came out publicly and after she came out to me I kind of had the inklings of the fact that I had a crush on her but it was really I was not ready to accept it I wasn't ready to think about it I <laughs> literally I was so over dramatic I was like 13 years old and I had I gotten an iPad for Christmas so I would sit in my closet literally in my closet I don't have a walk-in closet mind you I have a closet that's like probably like two or three feet deep and so I carved out like a little space and I would get in the closet sit on the ground and I had like the doors that roll so I would roll the door closed and I would sit on the ground on my iPad and look up coming out videos on YouTube and I would watch I kept googling how to know if you're gay as if the internet can tell you the internet cannot tell you my, what I always say is that if you're questioning it odds are you're probably at least a little bit queer so then that friendship ended in, in very bad terms very abruptly it was really bad I that was a really bad time for me and so I was like oh it was just I was friends with her that's it I just like nope obviously I'm straight there's no way that I'm gay and then I kind of just didn't deal with it like I just pressed it down that was a not great time for me and so I kind of associated trying to figure out my sexuality with that really negative time so I I, don't know, I didn't think about it until I was in 10th grade again and 10th grade was a really rough time for me I had a lot of that was kind of when I first had struggles with mental illness with anxiety and depression and so I kind of was starting to get better towards the end of the year and there's literally this moment so I was like in gym class and this girl was wearing yoga pants and I was just like staring at her ass and was just like oh no and I literally thought to myself I'm not gonna deal with this right now I'm not in a good enough place to deal with this which it was true but also I straight up just repressed it for a full additional like eight months <laughs> When I think about that, it's literally ridiculous. I was like, oh no, I find that girl attractive. And I was like, not dealing with it. And I just did not think about it. That was probably like April or May, because I remember like we were outside, so it must have been warm out. And so I did not think about it until the following January. And um, at the, that time, I was on Tumblr and I followed this one girl named Danny. This is so funny, like thinking about this. So uh, this girl that I followed, she was really cool. Like, she was a great writer. She really liked Ed Sheeran. Um, she was British. She was really pretty. And so I had a crush on her and I finally like accepted the fact that I was not straight. At the time, I thought. I was by which <laughs> we'll get to that but yeah so I finally accepted the fact that I was not 
straight, which, you know, it was literally three years in the making on Tumblr. Like, none, no people that I knew in real life followed me on Tumblr, so I was able to, like, post about it and, like, talk about it in a way that wasn't, like, I didn't have to admit it to people that I knew, which was, like, honestly, that was so nice for me to have, like, this kind of separate world, but also it was separating myself into two like separate beings like who I was in real life versus who I actually was. I had like a little mixed vlog which that's gay but <laughs> and I felt like I could like post about being queer and like I was kind of friends with Danny and then I told her that I liked her and it was very awkward because I literally I wrote this song that was like not good like it wasn't good it was you know I was 16 I was trying my best but it wasn't a good song recorded it and put it on YouTube and put it on unlisted and I sent her the link and was like hey just wanted to let you know that I like you here's the song I wrote for you which like is the most like 2014 Tumblr thing that I have ever like that I ever did. So I did that. Yeah, like she was flattered, but she was like, I don't know you that well, and it got weird. So we stopped being friends. But since I wrote that song, I I was in a band with some of my best friends in high school, and so my best friend Abby is the first person that I ever came out to, and <laughs> it was like such an awkward experience. So. Since we were in a band together, we would have like little like songwriting hangouts, just the two of us, because we were the ones who wrote the most. And so we were hanging out in my basement. I remember we had these cots set up from when we had a sleepover. And so we were hanging out, we were having like a pajama day songwriting hangout thing. I was like, I have a song that I wrote and I want to play it for you. And she was like, okay, play me a song. And then I played the song and I can't remember if I had she, her, hers pronouns or if it was just a gender neutral. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> this is really so funny. I was like, so I wrote that song about a girl, and my friend went, mm hmm. And I went, because I'm bisexual. And she was like, okay. And I was like, is this weird? And she was like, no, no, it's really not weird. And I was like, okay. And then I just like sat there in silence. So like, I made it weird, which. I feel like that's the main thing about coming out that like I didn't expect going into any of my coming out experiences is just like it's awkward. Like you're telling someone something huge and they don't know how to react and even if they want to react positively they might not know what they want to say. Like we were 16 like who knows what's going on when you're 16. So she just was kind of like okay and I was like alright. And then um, we listened to a five seconds of summer song and danced around the basement and then she left and she made a bye 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 joke and like I knew like everything was gonna be okay which was like that was great. That was a really positive first coming out experience even though it was a little bit awkward. Um, it was really good. I think after I came out to Abby I came out to my friend Liv but I pretty much did the same exact thing that I did with Abby and Liv was really chill with it. She was just like okay whatever and so that was another like positive thing in my coming out experience. So that was my junior year. My senior year I stayed in the closet to all but probably three or four people knew that I was gay or bi. I wasn't gay then. So during my college orientation there was an info session for this queer living learning community on my campus and so I went to it and I remember I was literally shaking when I went because I was so unused to being able to be out but I knew that when I came to college I did not want to be in the closet I was like I know one person that I'm coming to school with and I was already out to her with my friend Julia I didn't care like I cared obviously I cared very deeply but I was like I'm not gonna be in the closet in college I refuse to do it and so I went to this info session and then afterwards there was like lunch with our parents so I was getting lunch with my mom and she asked me where I wanted to live the next year and I was like, oh, I think I want to live in like this living learning community. I don't know, like maybe. She was like, it's not for gay people. And I was like, it's for allies too. And then she was like, but I mean, it's mostly for gay people. Like, are you gay? It's fine if you are, but just like, are you? I was not ready to tell her. Like our orientation was like, you got done at like 10 o'clock at night and then you woke up at like six or seven in the morning. And I need a lot of sleep to be a functioning human being. It's a character trait of mine. So I was stressed. I was kind of on, I think, like some sort of like high from finally doing something LGBT for once in my life. And I was like, well, I'm not gay, but I'm bi. And she was just like, okay. And 
we were eating, my school makes us red pepper gouda soup that's pretty good, but I cannot eat it anymore because this was not a great experience. I don't think she was expecting it. She did tell my brother and my dad without my permission, which we've, we've talked about it since then and she knows it wasn't great. I don't, me and my mom also, right now we're really close, but at the time we weren't very close. I was a very angsty teenager. I don't know what I expected, but it just, I wasn't ready. And that's, I think, what made that more negative than my other coming out experiences because I wasn't ready to talk about it with her and I felt very put on the spot, which this isn't to say that she did anything wrong. So after that, I came to college, which was great. I was out. It was nerve wracking at first, but then I realized like literally everyone is queer, <laughs> which is like, so good it was so great coming here and knowing like oh yeah I don't have to hide anymore it was one of the most liberating amazing things in my life being able to be out openly for the first time I kind of saw this girl my first semester it really solidified the fact that I was not straight and it was really nice to have that experience and to be like sure of it and then I had my first and only boyfriend I met him at a New Year's Eve party through a mutual friend and we hit it off we started going on dates that week and so we went on like three or four dates before I left we did long distance for a few months unofficial like we weren't officially dating whatever and then I went home for spring break. He asked me out officially like to be his girlfriend or whatever. We went on a few more dates while I was home and then I went back to school and I kind of knew, like I knew, but I didn't want to admit it. He's a great guy. Like he did nothing wrong at any point. It was entirely me not knowing what was going on. So I kind of had an inkling because I was like, I had way stronger feelings for this girl that I kind of saw last semester and she kind of treated me like shit. I went home at the end of the semester and we went on like a date or two. Like the feelings were completely platonic. Like he was my best friend at the time. You know, like I knew that I didn't want to date him. And I know it wasn't him, it was the fact that I was gay. It was weird to realize that and have to break up with him. Yeah, I broke up with him. I haven't spoken to him since. Oh yeah, so then I re-came out to my parents. That was pretty much my last like coming out experience before I started coming out to like my extended family, which I have. So my dad's side of the family is this big Italian family. It's great. And I kind of came out not exactly one by one. It was okay. So basically I came out to one of my cousins very much in passing, like some dude from her high school, like we ran into him at a restaurant and he like was very obviously hitting on her. And I was just like, man, I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that because I'm gay. And she was like, you're what? And I was like, gay. And I was like, Christmas Eve I came out to two of my other cousins and then the rest of my family I came out to them while we were on vacation in Italy my whole family went for my grandparents 16th anniversary we went rented this giant villa there's like 30 of us in this villa in Tuscany it was beautiful and so the second night we were there we all got like wasted like everyone was so drunk except my brother who passed out at like 8 p.m. he's the only person who did not get extremely intoxicated so I got really I was pretty drunk and I was just like you know I'd kind of like come out to a couple of my cousins earlier and then I was just like I wish I remembered this better but essentially what happened is I was like everyone be quiet I have an announcement everyone you know they all quieted down and then I just yelled I'm the gay cousin <laughs> which is like honestly and then they all just like cheered which was like funny and like great like it was an extremely positive coming out experience like that was great after doing that I decided that I was going to like publicly come out when I got home once I flew home from Italy I made a post on Instagram and shared it to Facebook that was like it said I'm gay no it said real life pics of me being gay in Italy hashtag out and proud hashtag yes this is a coming out post hashtag lesbian pride so the reception to that was really positive and really good and I'm honestly so so happy that I came out when I did because I was ready to deal with it so that is pretty much it what I want to say if you're if you're watching this and you're not out just know that it might take some time but you'll get there and you're gonna be out and you're gonna be happy and you're gonna be comfortable with yourself and it might take some time, but you'll get there. Coming out is not like a one-time thing. It's something that you have to do over and over again, which sucks, but 
being able to talk like being able to make this video right now is literally I teared up when I started recording because I was so happy that I finally am at a place in my life where I can record a video like this and can just do it oh god this is gonna sound so cheesy it does get better it really does if my 14 year old self could see me right now and know like what my life is like what my life is like I think that she would be like so happy I like to think all right well that is it for me Ted talking this whole ass experience so um if you like this I might make more story time e kind of videos more of my like life experiences if this wasn't super boring if you somehow made it to the end of this video because I feel like it's probably like a thousand years long um thank you for watching this whole thing bye oh